Hey, let's catch up with some Spurs news and notes you may have missed, and then to catch up on what's going on with Laurie Market and if the Spurs should, well, pony up exactly that big haul that Danny Ainge won. You are Locked On Spurs, your daily San Antonio Spurs podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, welcome back to Locked On Spurs and Locked On NBA Network. I'm your host, Jeff Garcia, Spurs writer for Kansas by San Antonio. Glad to have you all back. Happy hump day, everybody. Halfway through the work week, we'll get you through it right here on Locked On Spurs. As always, thank you for making Locked On Spurs your personal listen every single day. Free and available wherever you get podcasts. iTunes, Spotify, Kansas 5 Plus app, YouTube. The list goes on and on. Seriously, you guys are making the wise decision. Coming to Locked On Spurs first for all things Silver and Black. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use code Locked on NBA for 20 bucks off your first purchase. Terms apply. What are we talking about today? We're going to be looking at some Spurs news. Got a couple good ones here. And then uh, see what's going on with the whole marketing thing. You know, where does you know, the Jazz stand right now? What does Danny Ainge want? You know, can the Spurs meet that sticker price, even though it was a bit of a sticker shock? And uh, basically, should the Spurs go all in? So we're going to be uh, catching up on what is that. And then uh, catch up with you guys, the Lockdown Spurs fans. You guys are leaving some comments. See what you're all talking about right here on Lockdown Spurs. But first, some Spurs news and notes you may have missed. And you probably didn't miss this one. The Spurs have reportedly agreed to bring back both Charles Bassey and Big Mamu, Sandro Mamu Skelevili. They are back for next season. Now, according to a report, they did sign a one-year deal each so it's not like they uh got extended out for some time again preserving the spurs uh long-term financial situation very easily easily flippable contracts they're going to do some sort of mid-season trade uh again but it looks like uh the two big centers will be back next season according to espn's or wardronowski uh sandro has agreed to a one-year deal 2.2 million deal to return to the spurs next season while bassey inked a one-year deal, $2.2 million contract. That's according to the Athletic Sharania. All in all, good deals for both. For He had said uh, during the offseason that he would love to come back to San Antonio. It looks like that wish is going to be fulfilled after all. Uh, you know, He had himself a strong close of the season, averaged 11.4 points per game, 9.9 rebounds, 2.1 uh, assists in the final 11 games of last season. You imported very high 16 rebounds and 11 points against Memphis. So all in all, the 25-year-old is back uh, to uh, bring that grit, that toughness in the paint. As for Bassey, you know, he missed pretty much all of last season. If you all remember, he had a left knee injury that pretty much shoved him for the entire uh, season. He was playing great in the uh, Austin Spurs uh, system. You know, in the game where he got uh, injured, I believe he, had, he hurt his uh, left knee. He put up 30 points, 13 rebounds, and four blocks in the game against the Texas Legends. But that left the injury uh, he suffered in that game shelved him. You know, he is a local guy from San Antonio. He went to St. Anthony High School. He averaged about 3.3 points per game, 4.0 rebounds, and 72% shooting from the field in 19 games. So uh, good to see they'll be back. Spurs have not officially made it official. But uh, considering the sources, yeah, it looks like the uh, Spurs are bringing back a pair of fan favorites. Hopefully, you know, for Bassey, he'll stay. Uh, healthy and Mamu continued that play the way he ended. Look, Wimby loved the way uh, Mamu and him gelled to close out the season. I'm pretty sure that went uh, far along um, in the renegotiations with Mamu. Popovich even said at the end of the season that you know Mamu made it hard for them uh, to really think about letting him walk. Looks like uh, that harder work paid off for him, and he is back in San Antonio. So kudos to them. And uh, yeah, good luck to those guys into the future. In other Spurs news, uh, the uh, Spurs uh, Vegas projection for the win totals out via DraftKings. And uh, well, Vegas is projecting the Spurs to win 35.5 games. Now, we're going to have a big discussion on this and uh, an upcoming Locked On Spurs, but keep that in mind. The last time Vegas projected a win total was last year at 22 and a half, and they got it right. So we'll be discussing that uh, shortly here on Locked On Spurs, probably in the next couple of days, maybe, maybe tomorrow. In other Spurs news, the Spurs are inviting local San Antonio restaurants to apply for a Spurs Culinary Residency Program at the Frost Bank Center. So what does that mean? So basically, if you have what it takes as a restaurateur, you apply, and uh, well, you, you hopefully you're one of 12 local restaurants, and you'll be able to participate in the program 
basically what it is is chosen restaurants get an opportunity to showcase their menus their food to the fans throughout the entire uh, season this upcoming season at the frost bank center the uh, program's online application is now open until friday august 2nd go there apply if you have a restaurant if you're in the food industry there's a chance to put your name your food out front and center at spurs games for an entire season this is the fourth year the spurs are doing this and it uh, looks like it's been a success uh, the last season their local restaurants included uh, the panda brothers pat and kim bakery la pandaria uh, means things jacked potato i mean for Fruteria, Chavez, it was just a, a huge success. So if you have what it takes, you can uh, melt some taste buds uh, for some Spurs fans throughout the entire season. Now is your chance to do that. It's beyond that as well. The program allows uh, for some training to be focused on areas on how to promote restaurants and social media, marketing, human resources, financing. Basically, Spurs are going to help local businesses, in this case, the food industry businesses, just get better and get that business acumen going so it's a good development opportunity again the uh, application is live right now you just want to go to spurs.com go search for it and it's there for you that's your quick spurs news and notes uh when we get back we're gonna bring our guest raul dominguez from the ap sports we're gonna be catching up on what's going on with the lori marketing situation uh, a report has come out exactly what the jazz would like from the Warriors, and it's steep. And we're gonna apply that to the Spurs. Should the Spurs basically just go all in on Lori? And then we'll talk about you guys, Locked On Spurs fans. That's next, right here on Locked On Spurs. First of all, I talked about game time. You want to go to gametime.co right now. Game time is the authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball. Makes getting tickets easier and faster. Uh prices actually go down on the game time app the closer you get to the first pitch. Killer last minute deals, views from your seats, all in prices, lowest price guarantee, game time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. They even got event cancellation protection, job loss protection. You can find any kind of event in your area. And of course, those MLB tickets. Hey, those last minute ticket deals, you can save up to 60% on buying last minute tickets for sports, concerts, comedy, theater, whatever you need. They got that for you. All in pricing is a toggle feature that you're going to view your total upfront. So no surprise fees. And the lowest price guarantee or game time will credit you 110% of the difference. And uh, the seat view, you get a panoramic view of your seat in the app before you buy. What more do you need? Just go get that app right now. Go to gametime.co right now. Take the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets or whatever ticket you need with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, use code locked on NBA for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, that's, uh, well, create an account, step one. Redeem code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-N-B-A. That'll get you $20 off your first purchase. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. A Jedi uses the Force to subscribe to Lock on Spurs. Pass on what you have learned. And after a long delay, look who's back, everybody. It's him, the legend, Mr. Raul Dominguez. Follow him on X at Dominguez Cinco. He is a uh, AP sports writer based out here in San Antonio. How has the off season been treating you, Raul? It's been uh, just it's been pretty not quiet, but it's been uh, just anxious to get the season started. I mean, uh, with the trades that they made, you know, getting Harrison yeah. Barnes, signing Chris Paul, and you know, picking up uh, um, Stephon Castle. I mean, I'm I'm, mm -hmm. I'm eager to see what's going to happen with them. I know. Well, at least Castle. Now we're going to have to wait until what October. Mm -hmm. Late October now. We can see any basically the the long off season period that kind of quiet spot is beginning now already. Mm -hmm. Sure, the summer Spurs are playing. I guess Harrison uh, Ingram is there, and um, you know the summer Spurs got a couple more games. But yeah, we're gonna enter the quiet zone mm -hmm. of the off season very very soon. Why is Raul back? Well, we're gonna be discussing moves. You were talking about roster moves. One of the biggest roster moves that possibly could happen is Lori marketing to San Antonio. That's been the buzz this pretty much this entire offseason with Spurs fans, uh, you know, on the sports radio, print, online. Everybody's talking about Lori, but the Spurs are still in the mix. But it looks like Golden State uh, is likely, if we're going to balance it right now, maybe tipping the scales towards them. Now, we're going to be asking, should the Spurs go all in on Lori? He has the numbers. He has the youth. He's entering his prime. 
He would be a perfect complement to Wimby. I'm going to read to you what the uh, Warriors reportedly want, Roll. Let me tell you if the, you think the Spurs should match it here. So this is via The Athletic. According to them, the Golden State Warriors have been the most engaged team for marketing in recent weeks. Okay, that's what The Athletic is reporting. They had discussed a proposal, brace yourself, uh, Raul, here we go, around Moses Moody, multiple first-round picks, multiple pick swaps, multiple second-round picks. Uh, what else you got? Oh, yeah, they want the bulk of the talent on that uh, GSW roster. Uh, looking at Kaminga, Moody, as mentioned, uh, Put Podizimski. Uh, yeah, they want a haul. Danny Ainge is not playing, Raul. But before we hit record, we, you and I discussed this. The Spurs can technically, they can match that and be like, okay, yeah, we're good. We can get you all that. Should the Spurs go all in and get in Lori to San Antonio? Raul, your thoughts? I don't think they should because it, it, if you kind of base it off of what those, um, you know, what uh, the Jazz are reportedly looking for, uh, you have to think the Spurs have to give up Devin Vassell, yep. probably Keldon Johnson, yep. either Keldon Johnson or Jeremy, uh, and then – Malachi Brandon, Branham or some, something similar, you know, someone similar to him, a young talent. Um, and then, you know, Danny Ainge is, is a heck of a, a GM. Oh, you know, yeah. he, he knows what he has, so he's not going to give it up easily. You know, he's not going to uh, take, you know, just pennies back on it. He's going to want some of the Spurs 2025 draft picks. Mm-hmm. He's probably going to be smart and say, hey, you know what, you have those 2031 picks. I want those, you know, at least one of those. Uh, so I wouldn't do it. I love marketing. I love his game. I think he'd be a great fit uh, with this team, but not not at that price. Um, yeah. I, I thought when the Spurs should have gotten him, or I was hoping that they would get him, is when uh, Cleveland, uh, it was, I believe it was Cleveland, uh, traded him. Um, I, th- I thought that would have been a great time to pick him up. Um, but uh, right now, I, I just think the, the price is just way too high uh, mm-hmm. for him. You know what's going to bother me the most, Raul? It's, let's just say he does get traded into something way less than that. And, you know, he's going to go to state for a okay, Kaminga and, and whatnot and then a couple of first-rounders. I mean, that would be the most frustrating thing about it. Come the Spurs should do this. But I get where Spurs fans are coming from, Raul. The Spurs can match that sticker price. Mm-hmm. They, can, they can, and then some. I mean, the Spurs should be in the position of leading the pack for lower marketing because we all know what they have in store. Now, you're saying, no, don't do it, Spurs. Is it mainly also as well because you're mortgaging the future? I mean, you're pretty much giving up a lot that you could possibly continue to build around Wimby moving forward. You think that's just too much mortgaging in the future? I think it is. You know, I, I think, um, you know, I know Spurs fans are talking about, well, you got to trade Devin, you got to trade. Keldon, you know, Jeremy, well, you know, um, I think people just don't realize the potential these guys have. I mean, you look at, I uh, remember when, when Derek White was here, uh, mm-hmm. all those people that a lot of fans wanted to trade Derek. Oh, you know, he doesn't fit in. You know, we got DeJounte, you know, Derek hasn't filled his, fulfilled his potential. Yeah. And then you look at what he's doing in Boston, DeJounte, you know, they, they got a great haul from, you know, but he's had, you know, solid seasons in Atlanta. I think he's going to have a star turn in, in, in New Orleans, you know, where he's going to, get to be the man there, um, you know, more of the man than he was in Atlanta as far as leading the team. Um, but I think the same thing, you know, if you trade away Devin, I think Devin's going to be a, a, a star. You trade away Jeremy. I mean, Jeremy to me is one of the most intriguing prospects because uh, I think he, I think Jeremy has sort of a, a kind of a, a, co- a little bit of Kawhi in him mm-hmm. in terms of great defender, but his offensive game is developing. Uh, and I think eventually he's going to be a really good offensive player, you know, not, not a, uh, a guy that's going to be leading you in scoring, but a guy, guy that's going to be, you know, getting, you know, 20 points a game, 18 to 20 points a game and, you know, uh, 10 rebounds. You know, he, he could be a double, double machine. Um, so I wouldn't trade either one of those, either, either one of them. Uh, Keldon, I, 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 me personally, I just like Keldon. I think he, he's great for the team. Great chemistry. Doesn't mind coming off the bench. Gives you that spark, gives you that energy. Mm-hmm. Uh, players love him. I think he's great for the locker room. He's great for the spirit. Uh, so I wouldn't, to me, I wouldn't trade any one of those three. Uh, and then, of course, the draft picks. Uh, next year's going to be a mm-hmm. uh, tremendous draft. So I wouldn't trade any of those. I, I just think that in terms of what you're going to give up, I don't know if you're, you're, it's going to match up with what you get back. And then the other thing is if, if you get Laurie now, I mean, you're not going to win a title next year. 
you know, mm-hmm. even if you have Laurie, you know, Laurie, Harrison, Chris, Wimby, and then maybe oh, yeah. Jeremy starting, um, you know, you're not going to win a title next year, maybe not even the year after that. But if you keep these assets and, and these players develop like I think they can, you know, Devin and Victor started having great chemistry at the end, you know, mm-hmm. uh, Jeremy, Jeremy's a, a heck of a defender. I think I can't wait to see him, Wemby, and step on you know on, on the court at the same time because they're going to be able to lock up a lot of people. Um, you know, I, I want to see their development. I, I think that core has more of a chance to win a title, uh, developing together in the next three to five years than um, you know, sort of you know putting in different pieces right now. Like I, said, I, I don't see Laurie making. Uh, that type of a difference in the next three years because you ha- still have to build around them. Uh, because if you lose Devin, Jeremy, and then possibly Keldon or someone like that, where are you going to get uh, the players to, to fill yeah. those roles? Yeah, I'm going to take Devil's Advocate here, and I say you do it. I say you you go all in. I mean, this is a guy that can that can be part of a new, I want to say big three, but almost starting with a big three. We don't know what Castle's going to turn out to be. But if you can have Wimby and Lori, and hopefully Castle turns into what he can be, then the Spurs possibly got themselves to the next big three in San Antonio. Oh. And look, you got to use those draft picks. See, Zero, I see this more like an investment. Like, mm-hmm. this is my investment portfolio. I got, I got commodities. I got gold. I got silver. I got an IRA. I got all this. I, in other words, I got draft picks i got players i got cap space why not reinvest that into a player who's a known commodity sure there's 2025 and i get that role i understand that but there's still a couple things that are still kind of making it still cloudy what if atlanta is not that bad what if they're a middling team again are those picks really going to be top three you know Mm -hmm. what if they end up being like 10 12 around that area so that's too much out there and then then two you know, you have a proven commodity with Lori. You know what he is. You know how he can fit in. With a draft, if you draft a player, you're going to take time to develop them, their body. These kids are coming in teenagers now. They're not fully grown men, fully into their bodies and adapted for the NBA life. Lori is. What about that argument? You know, you hear that a lot, saying mm-hmm. when now you have the assets to do it, make it happen, San Antonio. Yeah, I mean, that's a great point. Like I said, you uh to bring a talent like that in, uh, like I said, the only thing with me is, is in order to to get him, you would have to not only give up the draft picks, but you have to give up, uh, you know, like Devin and 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 Jeremy. Yeah. Jer- Devin definitely probably definitely probably Devin, possibly oh, Jeremy. Sure. Uh, so to me, losing those guys and that and the draft picks, um, you know, is going to be tough for them to, to sort of fill fill those holes because uh, you're gonna have to find players to fill those roles. Um, and again, I, I don't, even with Laurie, um, you put Laurie on this team, um, you know, Laurie on this team with Chris Paul, Harrison, uh, I don't know who, whoever's left, maybe Jeremy or Keldon. Um, yeah. to me, that's not a championship team. You know, you look at the way, how good yeah. the West is. You look at Ant, you know, Minnesota led by Ant. You look at, um, um, Houston with, with what they're developing there, um, you know, all these really good young teams. I just don't see Chris Paul and Harrison Barnes w- with Wimby and Laurie being able to push them over the top. And then eventually you're going to have to replace Chris. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm sorry. And that's Stephen Castle, you know, as well. Yeah. Um, but I don't see them pushing for a, a title because eventually you have to replace Chris because of age. Eventually you have to replace Harrison because of the age. Yeah. Um, and it, it, it would be, also depend, I guess, on how many draft picks you would you would trade away. Uh, but as far as like twenty twenty five, the even I think, I think maybe the possibly the plan is if um, maybe grouping some of those 20, 20, 20, 25, 20, 25 picks in order to move up. So mm-hmm. um, you know, because it's going to be a deep draft. So you know, maybe you find the team says, hey, you know what, give us the one, two, or three pick. Yeah. We give you three or four. You know. Mm-hmm. 20, 25 picks to help you develop your whole roster rather than just yeah. one player. Whereas if the Spurs, you know, can go all in maybe on, on someone. So uh, I, you have a great point. Like, to, but to me, it's just, um, I, I see it um, kind of as the future, but also the the, the present again, I, I just don't think uh, Laurie paired with, with, with 
Chris and Stefan and Harrison, I don't think that makes you a, uh, a contender. I think it makes you maybe the fifth, sixth seed, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, and and next year, once you know Chris gets a little older, Harrison gets a little older, yeah. then where are you going to go? You're going to have to kind of start over mm-hmm. again. So uh, again, the the big thing for me is you know they would probably have to give up Devin, and then maybe one or two of their their other young guns, you know, which is, you know, Jeremy or Keldon or Malachi. And, and to me, I, I think they're developing something special here. Uh, I think you saw it at the end of last year. Um, and I would hate to see that sort of broken up before it has a chance to to yeah. really reach its potential. What, what about the, the Wimby effect and as far as wins? Mm-hmm. You know, if, if he if the he if the Spurs show him that they're making a move like a Laurie, for example, mm-hmm. that they want to win now, that has to do well in his eyes. Uh, you know, look, I get you know, you're getting him at the right time, Wimby. That is because he's still on that rookie contract, he's been in that rookie contract for a while, yeah. And what you know, again, another what if right now that just kind of weighs on me thinking, like, well, you make the move now for Lori is because he's gonna want to get paid eventually, and that's mm-hmm. gonna be a probably one of the richest NBA contracts in history. Uh, the Spurs may not be able to afford a Lori marketing type down the road, you know. What do you think about that argument? Um, yeah, that, that's another valid argument. Yeah. Um, but again, I, I kind of keep going back to uh, the poten- potential of this yeah, roster. I think for you, Ro, you just don't want to mortgage the. I think for you, you probably don't just want the future. The mortgaging of the future is too much, right, for a guy. Well, because he, yeah, it, Laurie's it, good, it, but he's yeah. not mega star good. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's, and it's, it's not just the future. I think it's the present. Again, I, I think Devin's going to have a great year next year. I think Jeremy's going to have a great year. I think Keldon maybe get a little more comfortable coming off the bench. Uh, Stefan Castle, I think he's going to be tremendous. Um, oh, yeah. I, I just think that this group has a lot of potential. I mean, you sort of look at the uh, – it, it's different players, different sort of atmospheres. But, uh, you know, you look at uh, Jalen Brown and, and Jason Tatum, you know, just sort of the way they were allowed to develop. People kept – you know, Boston kept bringing in these different guys to, to work with them, and it just mm-hmm. never fit. It never fit until they said, hey, you know what? you guys are the ones that we're going to go with and we're going to surround you with talent rather than bringing in a, a guy to lead, you know, to lead you, uh, lead both of you. Uh, I think that's part of it. Uh, I think Wemby's going to have a tremendous boost next year. Uh, you know, he's, he's looking incredible in the, so far, you know, with the preparations for the summer Olympics. Uh, I just think that, I think there's going to be a big boost next year. Like I, we had talked about it before. I, th- I predicted they're going to have 30 wins. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think with these additions, I think maybe it's 35 was what I'm, I'm predicting. Uh, you look at Houston, the Rockets, they brought in vets. Uh, they finished right. 541 and 41. I think maybe a, a little bit of a slip, similar jump uh, with them, with the Spurs. Um, you know, but but I, I think if, if the Spurs are definitely not going to have a season like last year. Oh, They're going to no. be a lot better. They're going to be a lot more successful. Mm-hmm. And I think Victor's going to see that. He's going to appreciate it. And then uh, the big thing is, I mean, you and I watched how many games did we see down the stretch where mm. Spurs just blew it, you know, just because, yeah. you know, they, they didn't have that vet presence, you know, sort of, you know, running around on offense, losing the ball, turnovers, mm-hmm. bad shots. I think Chris Paul's going to help to help eliminate that, whether he's on the court or if for some reason he's out, you know, he's going to be able to teach these guys how to mm-hmm. remain calm, Harrison as well. So I think those – games that they lost that they should have won down the stretch. I think they're going to start winning those games. Um, and, you know, I, I, Spurs, you know, could get in the play in. They could maybe finish yeah. seventh, eighth, you know, maybe even six, you know, uh, and possibly, you know, surprise the team, you know, maybe in the first round or something. Uh, but I, I really think that on the course they're on, I, I think it's better than sort of in certain – uh, a marketing in or someone like that mm-hmm. in there right for right now, you know, just, just, if, if they could trade draft picks just for like, just draft picks for marketing, I'd say, yeah. But if, you know, if, if you're going to have to give up a lot of this young talent that, that you've developed and that's starting to bond, I, I think that you're essentially saying, okay, we're going to reset and start over again. Yeah. Yeah. There is that too. There, uh, you're giving away known assets already that are familiar with the system to bring in Lori, who's going to need time to get adjusted to the Spurs system. Yeah, it, it, I think it could go either way. You know, then there's the aspect that he has to sign an extension. The Spurs are not any team is not going to make a move until if and when Laurie does do that, or they could just wait it out 
What if we they just wait to him to become a free agent? Maybe he doesn't sign an extension. You yeah. know, the spend the Spurs don't have to worry about any of this mess. So yeah, it just it's just interesting to know that here we are, this team, we know what their asset portfolio is, and they can make that move. Look, if at the end of the day, do you think he gets moved? Do you think the do you think Danny Ainge will move him? Whether it's to San Antonio or Golden State or whoever, it just feels like with Danny Ainge's reputation, the recent report via The Athletic about what he wants, and yeah, it just feels like ultimately he might not even get moved. Yeah, I think, you know, you had a great point as far as like, you know, if what happens if it turns out, you know, it's just Kaminga and one first first round pick, it, it may come down to that, you know, because uh, Golden State has great front office, you know, they're not going to, they're not going to give up a lot for him. Yeah. So who knows, maybe... Danny Ainge, you know, maybe the market sort of dwindles and he decides, you know, hey, you know, I'm not, uh, I'll just kind of take whatever yeah. is offered me. But same time, though, Danny Ainge is, like I said, a great GM. So I, I, I uh, I'm sorry to, to answer your question. I, I, I don't think he's going to get moved. I, I think I, he's going to stay with Utah. Yeah. Um, that's what it feels like. It feels like marketing may end up staying there, even if it's just for this last season. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, then takes his talents elsewhere. I, I do believe he is a free agent. I probably think he is. I can't yeah, sign an extension yet. So I think he's. A, yeah, I think it'd be. A, I can't remember if he's unrestricted or restricted yeah. if he doesn't sign. So yeah, and even here's the thing: even if he's a restricted free agent, the Spurs can try to poison pill that. You know, they can do it. They can definitely <laughs> do it because they're they're a position again. Credit to Brian Wright mm-hmm. for getting the Spurs in, in a strong position to be a force when it comes to other teams restricted free agents Uh and then of course just regular free agency in general but going back to marketing man if he comes to the spurs like right now i don't know if you heard this vegas has the spurs projected at a 35 36 win total next season and i bring this up because you mentioned right now maybe as of now they're a play-in team 35 36 doesn't get you in the play-in in the west it took about 44 45 to get in yeah that's just to get in the play-in Mm. Um, does Lori push you in? Does Lori help push this team to a 22 plus win turnaround tacked onto last year? At least 22 more wins. I, I, you know, maybe that's a big deciding factor for the Spurs. Like, does he push him that much over the top? And, and you know, with Chris Paul and Barnes, and I mean, we can't say this anymore, Raul. I think we're getting there. We can't say this is a young Spurs team anymore. Mm. This is a team with. Veterans, Devin oh. Vassell's a veteran. Kelton Johnson's a veteran. Trey Jones is a veteran. Sohan's a veteran. Zach Collins is a veteran. Malachi's a veteran. He's in the oh. third year now. So I think that whole label of young team needs to be kind of fading away already. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're still a pretty young team. I think they're, I think with adding Chris and Harrison, I think they're like, uh, I think they're just under 24 years old before mm-hmm. they picked up those guys. Yeah. And I think they're just over 24. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's, they're still a fairly young team, but, but, you know, obviously more experience with like you're saying Devin, but you know, that's sort of my, my whole thinking, like, is it, if, if they could pick up Laurie for draft picks, definitely do it, you know, maybe one player or some of that, but if, if they have to trade away uh, the package that Golden mm-hmm. State uh, or that Utah's seeking from yes. Golden State, right. then uh, uh, again, too much. Again, like, where do you fill those holes? You know, you, yeah. you have to pick up, uh, you know, a veteran player, you know. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, and right yeah, now yeah. the market isn't as obviously as big. So, uh, but again, if, if, if it comes down to draft picks, I'd say definitely. Uh, but if you have to trade those draft picks and Keldon and yeah. Devin and, and or Jeremy, I, I just I just don't think it's, it's good for the Spurs because, um, again, as far as the win total, like, Laurie, if you put Laurie on this existing team, definitely, sure. it's definitely. But if you put Laurie on this team at minus three or four it guys, it's, yeah, uh, three, you know, like without Devin, without Jeremy, possibly without Keldon, then you know, then then that was one of the problems last year with Spurs. They didn't have a bench. If you, if you get yeah. rid of those guys, then who, who's on their bench? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go to say, I'm sorry, uh, Utah's just going to gut the San Antonio roster. 
want. The, the, it's, it's too, as of now, if this report is true, then, you know, that's just too steep of a price. Oh. It's just sticker shock. It's just going to the car lot and how much you want for this car? You know, it's like that. It's like, whoa. Yeah, yeah can pretty, I see pretty, can I see something without AC? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can I see that with a stick? Do you still make stick shifts, in, you know, nowadays? I don't know if they do. But yeah. Lori, as phenomenal as a PC he is, and he would be for San Antonio, I, I feel like maybe the Spurs are kind of cooled off a bit. You know, you 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 can't blame Ainge. You know, I would do the same thing if I was in his position. If I had an asset like Lori Market and I know teams will want him, I'm going to be okay. Name your, Here's my price. You know, let's talk business. But you look at the, what happened with the Bridges deal, with the New York-Brooklyn deal, and that just threw everything off. You're Ainge is seeing that. Like, wait, you – Brooklyn, what? How much did they get out of New York for that? You know, okay, I have Lori. What more can I get out of that? So there, that didn't help the Spurs uh, cause. But I still believe, like, even if the Spurs do not do anything and don't bring Lori to San Antonio, I think this team, and in the course they're going right now, they're on the right path to coming out of the rebuild. Sure, marketing maybe pushes you further away out of the rebuild, but the, at the pace they're going right now, they're trucking along. It looks like they may start seeing... At least seen the light at the end of the tunnel, huh, Raul? Yeah, I definitely think so. Like I said, I think like I said, I think Devin's going to have a great year. Uh, I think Jeremy's going to have a, a breakout year. I, 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 that kid, I think he's going to be uh, wind up being one of the best two way players in the league. Um, it's a kid, a young man, um, you know. And then you had Harrison and Krista that that group, and then of course Wemby. I, I think Wemby's going to take yeah. just another leap. Uh, I think he's going to start getting in the MVP conversation. Oh, yeah. uh, you know, I, I think, uh, I, like I said, you know, I, I think 35 wins, I think, you know, depending on situations, they could get up to 40, uh, maybe scratching on that that um, door for a play in. Um, mm-hmm. But e- even with that, I, I still don't think they have the pieces uh, to be a yeah. title contender right now. But yeah, uh, I, I'd say within the next two or three years, I think if, if they if they stay on this course, I'd say within the next two or three years, I think they're going to be uh, mentioned as far as title contenders. Yeah, and as far as your point about the title contending thing there, you know, what is missing is the Robin and the Batman combo right now. Maybe yeah. that'll come up and be Vassell. You know, for me, for it's just simple. He needs to stay healthy. Just mm-hmm. stay healthy. You know, that, I think that'll go a long way. That'd be a big first step in the right direction. But as of now, the Spurs don't have that. Robin and the Batman combo, and you look yeah. at all the contending teams. It's Murray and Joker. It's Jalen Brown and Tatum. It's Kyrie Irving and Luca. It's Wimby and Devin. You know, I think it's going to be Castle. I, well, it, it will be eventually, but yeah. I don't. I don't think it'll be as soon as next season. Uh, uh, well, I, I don't know, man. That, that kid Castle is just he. Uh, I, watching him play in the summer league, he, he just sort of it, the way he, he his calmness and just sort of mm-hmm. the way that he plays and. You know the basketball IQ. He just reminded me of, of Derek White. You know, when, remember mm-hmm. when Derek White had that great summer? Oh, in, I remember that. Yeah. Uh, Castle. I don't know why. It just sort of reminded me of that. And it, it, you know, sort, sort of in a different, you know, different styles, different ways. But j- just that maturity, that basketball mm-hmm. IQ. I, I think I, I would. I'm not a betting man, but it, I would bet that he's going to crack the, the starting lineup before the end of the year. Yeah. Uh, I think where where exactly? I don't know. But I have a few, I, I think he's going to be crack that starting five. Yeah, exactly. You know, I I I appreciated what he did in the summer league. I'm not, I'm kind of tapping on the brakes a bit for me because he shined great against Team China, mm. and then you know we look at the level of competition. Now I think that's, but I think it's a good blueprint to what he can be uh, mm. moving forward. And it's unfortunate he got shut down. I, I get why the Spurs di- did it. You know, you know, number four pick. You don't want to risk injury. But I would have loved to have seen him play more just to get more reps in. That's it. That's it. Because now he's on his own now into the training camp. Now he's probably working out by himself or maybe he's going to hook up with the guys, Uh you know, and meet up at UTSA as they normally do every uh, offseason and run uh, on the court there. But until he gets a training camp, preseason games, and, you know, I I do think those extra couple games would have helped him out Mm. in Las Vegas. He is Raul Dominguez. Uh, Make sure to follow him on X at Dominguez Cinco. Let him know what you think about his thoughts on should the Spurs go all in and Lori on Lori marketing and meet that price tag that Danny H has, at least according to the athletic 
And uh, you can let me, me know just by going to the Locked On Spurs YouTube page and leaving your comment. Speaking of the Locked On Spurs YouTube page, when we get back, we're going to read a couple of comments that you guys are leaving there and react to them. That's next right here on Locked On Spurs. Hey, this is Hot Rod. And I'm RC from the Cybertron Spurs. And you're listening to Locked On Spurs with, with Jeff Garcia. Garcia. And we're back right here on Locked Out Spurs with Raul Dominguez. Follow him on X at Dominguez Cinco. Make sure to do that right now. By the way, Raul, were you hyped about the Brave New World trailer with Red Hulk? Yeah. Mm. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I saw that at the end. I'm like, that, that looks interesting. That, so, I, mean, I, I don't gonna, know. Yeah. I, I wonder who it's going to be. So. Yeah, yeah. I'm getting those vibes of, you, you know, Civil War movie, the, oh. the, the, the Winter Soldier movie. I, I think that's awesome. So um, I'm going to have to get a Red Hulk poster on here. If, <laughs> if, I, I just hope they don't nerf him I just like they did to Banner Hulk. That was yeah. just horrible. I yeah. would never forgive the MCU for doing that to Hulk. Mm-hmm. But enough of that. Y'all here to talk silver and black, not red and green for Hulk and Red Hulk there. And uh, But hey, you guys are leaving a lot of comments. Let's dive into them. So, Raul, you were talking about the starting point guard, and, and well, we're just starting in period with Chris Paul around in Castle. Somebody's actually thinking about that, too. The first one is from at Lilo Little 3131. He says, everyone is saying that Paul should start knowing his recent injury history, either is misinformed or too optimistic. Even if Paul starts, Castle, Castle is most likely going to receive more minutes than him. What do you think about that? You know, this, I guess he's trying to get at his, sure, CP3 stars, but ultimately it's going to be Castle that's going to be given a bulk of the minutes. Um, po- Possibly. I mean, uh, you, you figure, what, you know, Chris's age and his, his uh, you know, you know, obviously older older players, so, you know, injuries, are he's more prone to injuries. Yeah. You know, I'm sure Pop's going to rest him. I'm sure, he's, you know, he's going to have some oh, days yeah. off and, and such. So, you know, uh Overall, you know, maybe Stefan plays uh, more games. Um, you know, maybe Castle plays more minutes, you know, averages more minutes. Um, but I think in the end, I think, you know, obviously Chris, they're going to want Chris on the floor in crunch time. Uh, but, but I, I, you know, that, that could be a case of where, you know, Castle has more, averages more minutes than Chris Paul, you know, maybe, play, you know, probably he's going to play more games than Chris. Uh, you know, I'm sure that you're going to see a lot of situations where you're going to see Chris and castle on the, the the court at the same time um you know but i'm looking forward to it you know because he again you know chris has done you know uh, done just a tremendous job as far as helping mentor mentor uh young players he did with shay and uh, mm-hmm. uh when he was at oklahoma city you know booker. Uh, he did booker as well booker in phoenix and then even in houston you know he did a great job there like he, he he's still a great competitor but but he he does a great job sort of helping the, the young players along. And, and, and uh, I know he's gotten some knocks on him, as, you know, as far as being a leader, I guess, you know, from the his days with the Clippers and kind of the way that all turned out. But uh, to me, uh, from what I've always seen, he, he's a tremendous leader. And I think he's really going to help uh, Castle and, and even even the off guards uh, to be better players. I mean, you look at uh, how much Shea uh, developed after he left. You look at Devin. Devin's game is more well, well, well-rounded now. Um, so I, I, I'd say yes. I, I'd agree with the, uh, you know, the, the Castle's probably going to wind up with more minutes um, and, and possibly you know, more minutes at point guard than, than Chris. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Even, even if uh, Chris Paul doesn't stay the full season, and he gets waived to go to a contending team. You know, then there would be your launching pad for Castle uh, to slide in easily. But. Yeah, I see it. I think Pop, he knows he has a veteran on his hand. You know, he's not spry. He'll likely, you know, load manage him. And I think Chris Paul will appreciate that. And look, he came off the bench last year with GSW. I don't see why that could possibly happen throughout the season as team development is kicking in still during the rebuild. But that's a great uh, question. By the way, what do you think? Do you think uh, Kelton is going to give up number three to CP3? Oh, definitely. I mean, uh, even if it's yeah, I think so too. maybe just for one season, you know, because he's he's a big yeah. Chris Paul fan, so I think he's yeah. gonna. You know, I, who knows? Maybe Chris Paul says, "Hey, you know, you give me your number, I'll, I'll put you in a State Farm commercial with me or something." You know. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, and, and if Kelton does give up number three, I I predict, and I'm I'm pretty confident about this that he'll go to uh, zero. 
because he so. wore zero at in at the Austin Spurs. That was his jersey yeah. number. Yeah, because yeah. he wore ten in high school, grade school, but that number is actually retired. I believe it's yeah. retired in uh, his home city, in Virginia. And then I think he, in, but he's worn three in Kentucky, and I think he wore it in high school. So, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, he I mean, talked yeah. about he talked about Chris being one of the the people players that he looked up to. So uh, he mm-hmm. meant, he's mentioned before about that was one of the reasons why he, he picked three. So, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, oh, one, one of the things I was going to mention as far as like with, with Pop, I mean, uh, with as far as Castle, like Pop has a you know has that history obviously with Tony Parker where mm-hmm. you know he decided. You know, early in the season, I think it was near the, I think it was before the, yeah, it was definitely before the All Star break with yeah. Tony. You know, he's like, hey, you know, let's have this young kid start. You know, uh, over the vet. That was with uh, Antonio Daniels, right? Or mm-hmm. Speedy Classic? It was Antonio it was Daniels. Antonio. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely do see Castle on the uh, t- the TP track. You know, let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. Then throw him in the fire. And mm-hmm. I, I think, I think Castle will excel there. I think he will excel, and in today's modern NBA, his game fits. He's bigger than Tony, uh, plays a better defense already than Tony. No knock on Tony. You're you're a Hall of Famer. You're, you're you know so Tony, you know not trying to knock on you, but as of right now, you know Castle definitely um, has that. But he, nobody can ever top the speed of TP. Uh, that's for sure. All right, let's go into our next uh, comment here, and they're they're coming after me, Raul. This guy's coming after me. This is from Frank Santini, forty nine ninety. He says, no, Jeff, you are way wrong. Vassell is the clear-cut number two best player on the Spurs, not even close. Now, Frank uh, was reacting to a recent episode of Lockdown Spurs where we were kind of going through the roster, like who's, you know, rank them one and Wimby one, and who's after that. And I and the guest and myself, we brought up, it's probably Harrison Barnes as of right now because he's a consistent outside shooter. He is a veteran. You know, he's not on that we're young, we're learning phase. And he's an Iron Man. He plays all 82 games, at least for the last two seasons. No knock on Devin. I know injuries happen, but Devin isn't as consistent from the outside shot as Harrison and not as healthy as the veteran. What do you think about that? Do you think it was kind of dumb of me to say that Harrison is a second best player as of this day of recording? You're all watching it now on Wednesday afternoon or morning. What do you think, bro? Um, I, I would, uh, I, would, I would tend to agree with that as far as like De- Devin's the clear, clear number two scorer on this mm-hmm. team. He, uh, to me, he's sort of the Wemby's running mate on that. But as far as just an overall player, I, I definitely have to say Harrison because Harrison's great defender, uh, great shooter, uh, you know, smart player. Uh, I, I could see Harrison being sort of the, the second option. I, I think Devin's going to take that next step, Jeremy, uh, mm-hmm. as well, to where you know they either one might be considered the uh, during the season may be you know hey you know there's there's no doubt that these guys are the number two two guy, but as far as uh, you know ranking them, I, I I'd say that that's fair. I, I, again, Harrison is uh, mm-hmm. veteran player. Uh, again, great defense and offense. So overall, I, I I agree with that. Harrison's number two. Uh, again, I think Devin yeah. needs to, to to pick up his, his you know uh, defensive presence a little bit more. Uh, again, what you're saying as far as you know, just staying healthy, um, staying healthy, you know, for for more of the season, um, you know. But uh, I I I agree with you. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I want I would love to see Devin. Uh, you know, overtake Barnes in that capacity uh, with the Spurs because then the Spurs will have their one-two punch with mm-hmm. Wimby and Devin moving forward. Because look, Harrison may not even finish the whole season, or he may do the whole season and and then all right, Spurs, it's been good. Later, you know, he could pull that. So if he if he can help Devin become that number two option uh, to Wimby, I think that'll be great. And then you know Vassell, but I mean, it's, it's close in my opinion. They Devin and Harry and uh, Wimby have that rapport. They they started to flourish late in the season. You, we were there in the conference rooms after games where Vassell was even telling himself and us like, "Yeah, I, I'm I'm starting to get it with Wimby. I'm starting to get it. I understand. Uh, you know, if he's off, I gotta have a good game. But if I'm off, he's gonna. Have, I mean, he was talking already like that. So I would like to see Devin become that Batman and Robin combo with a Wimby. But um, man. 
Yeah. And, you know, it, it's about yeah. consistency as well. You know, yeah. and I think Devin talked about this and I know Pop talked about, about it as far as just, just being consistent. You know, if, if you, if you, if you're having trouble scoring, then impact the, the, the game in some other way, you know, with, with your defense or with your hustle, um, you know, and I, I think Harrison understands that. Uh, mm-hmm. Again, it's not a knock on Devin, um, you know, but Harrison is a vet that, that sort of, knows his role and knows what he needs mm-hmm. to do. Um, and, and again, great defender, um, De- you know, but I could clearly see Devin and, and Jeremy um, and, and Castle, um, mm-hmm. you know, making that big leap this year to be sort of that, that number clear cut number two on both sides of the ball. Right. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if it was uh castle at the end of the season. I mm-hmm. wouldn't be surprised at all. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, if Devin takes that mantle, uh, if, even if Jeremy takes that mantle, nobody should be surprised. But, man, like, it just makes you eager for the season to start, even though yeah. it's still months yeah. and months away. But yeah. uh, and I was just going to say real quick, I, yeah. you know, no knock on Devin. Devin's one of – I think he's one of, one of the best players. Like, I know people talk, oh, let's trade him, whatever. And I yeah. just – uh, to me, I, th- I think Devin's going to be uh, an all-star. You can see it, yeah. <laughs> to me, he's not a guy that, that – you get rid of to me he's a guy that you build around a great score he, he's learning how to score um i think with him it's like the more difficult the shot is the easier it is for him so he just kind of needs to you know uh whatever that emotion is or or mm. you know that adrenaline that gets going when, you know when, when he's taking these tough shots you know sort of use it to you know make those mm. shots you know when you're wide open or when it's not quite quite as as difficult mm. Um, but that's just consistency and, and but but I, I, I really love Devin's game. I, yeah. great great young man, uh, um, great competitor. Um, mm. but but yeah, I, I think he's I think again him, Jeremy and, and Castle I think are gonna take big leaps this year. Yeah, for sure. And uh, with Devin again, his words, you were there in that room with me, you know, he re- realizes he wants to stay healthy for a full season. He, he brought that up to end the season. And I think for me, that's, in my opinion, if I had to tell Devin, do this list, uh, number one would be stay healthy. Because I think if he stays healthy, then the consistency comes. Then he's not, you know, oh, you know, I had myself with two great games, 20 plus, I'm shooting great. And then boom, something happens. Okay, now I'm out. I get it back in rhythm again. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I think for him, for me, in my opinion, I'd like to see him stay healthy. Because stay that. I'm not saying, you know, you know, play 48 minutes a game and all 82 games. I know you got to get rest, uh, whatnot, but at least take a leap in that direction. And talk to Harrison Barnes. Ask him how he does it. You know, Barnes has done it for two years or in a row or more than that. 82 games all, every single game each season. So another reason why the Spurs have these two veterans, CP3 and Barnes, uh, to help this young squad get better. He is Raul Dominguez. Make sure to follow him on next at Dominguez Cinco right now. Uh, you know, secret notes. Truth be told, you know that that scene of Red Hulk that was Red Alley, really uh, Raul there. <laughs> Raul, you've been getting, you've been hitting the gym during the off season, huh? No, nah, not really, not really. <laughs> <laughs> just, just trying to trying to get healthier. So there you go. Hey, Raul, what's going on in the off season for you? Uh, well, how can fans uh, catch up with you? What are you working on? Uh, right now, just you know, just kind of watching the Spurs and and. Uh, you know, watching what happens with them, you know, kind of keeping an eye on UTSA football. You know, I think I think they're going to have a tremendous season as well. Uh, mm-hmm. Hopefully fans go out there and watch them, uh, you know, at the Dome. Uh, and then also kind of keep an eye on seeing what's going on with the Spurs, with their uh, plans for a, a new arena. You know, I, I hope mm-hmm. that, that comes to fruition because that'd be great. You know, that uh, whatever, you know, it's going to be called the Frost Bank Center again or whatever. And then the Alamo Dome, yeah. you know, within walking distance of each other. I think that's going to be, uh, you know, yeah. great for the city. I don't know about me because I live downtown. It'll be a madhouse for me. <laughs> be like back in, I'm like, yeah, back in New York. This is what it felt like. Okay, I remember this feeling. Mm. Uh, but again, everybody, make sure to follow our rule on X at Dominguez and go do that right now. Don't let them go Red Hulk on you guys. Hey, uh, we'll be back tomorrow with more Spurs stuff. Talk about what's going on with the summer Spurs, other news that may have popped up from uh, then and now. And check out Locked On Sports Today 24 C- streaming. 24 7 streaming that channel there we go only on youtube brought to you by the locked on podcast network and uh subscribe against my plus app itunes spotify pick a platform we are there so for raul red hope Domingo, i am jeff garcia we're gonna put a lock in this episode of locked on spurs